off and really is a product of the system in terms of just learning, growing, maturing. A lot of that has to do with the things that he accomplished down in the weight room, um, you know, just in terms of his growth as far as explosiveness, strength, power, speed. Uh, he's changed his body a lot over the course of that time, has endured some some injuries, just, you know, not major things, but little, you know, nicks along the way and and uh, things that D-linemen are accustomed to playing with. He's battled through that, a lot of that, again, due to his his toughness and uh, just – the the training that he's put in over the course of his time here it's been phenomenal. It's been fun to watch. He's a great guy. Tom Caker. Hi. You skipped Chad. That's okay. Uh -oh. um, All right. Uh, I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Uh coach, I wanted to ask you about the uh, Merriweather, break me, those guys, the red shirt guys, what they've been like uh, for you and what have you seen in their development? Yeah, we've got a couple of them. Uh, Kenny Mer Merriweather uh, is a really twitched up guy. He's 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 uh, going to be fun to watch. He's got a lot of personal, um, not personal, but physical growth, I should say, that, uh, you know, he needs to go through just in terms of putting on some size and strength. But he's got really good length. Um, like I say, he moves really well. He's flexible guy. Uh, he's already shown up in pass rush in terms of just uh, having a real knack for rushing the passer. And we haven't even begun to scratch the surface on, you know, really coaching him up on the finer details of how to get better in that area. So um, really, really anxious to watch him uh, improve and grow over the course of his career here. <clears throat> Chase has been real steady. Uh, he's a big, strong guy, yeah, really anxious to learn. And, um, you know, all these guys, including Maddox, Borcherding, Johnson, who's the other guy, um, you know, in that class, those, those guys are uh, – working hard and, and like all these other guys like Joe Evans who we, we referenced here just a minute ago going to be a product of the system just coming in and doing everything day in and day out that other guys have been asked to do over the course of their careers here and as they do that I think you'll see their their fundamental base improve and um, you know their opportunity for playing time will be directly related to that but uh, hard working guys fun to be around very coachable fit right into our room just like the others who preceded them Okay, go ahead, Chad. Hi, Jay. Good morning. Um, Good morning, Chad. Uh, yeah. Uh, unique quarterback preparation. Uh, Illinois has got a, a red-hot backup, uh, but today they announced that Luke Altmaier will start. I don't know if you believe that, but how do you go about <laughs> how do you go about preparing for this type of situation? Because uh, at, I don't, I imagine you might see both on Saturday. I would expect to see both unless Altmaier is the starter and does come out and is just red hot, which obviously we hope he's not. But, um, you know, the, it doesn't appear as though they changed a lot um, from as far as their system between the two quarterbacks. But Altmaier is probably a little bit more mobile and uh, is very, very dangerous with his feet. Uh, he gets out of the pocket and runs on people, although they scored – uh, moving out of the pocket uh, in the last play of the game in overtime uh, last week to to beat Indiana on the last play of the game by breaking, containing, getting outside the pocket. It wasn't necessarily that the end was in such bad position as much as he just didn't have the athletic, um, you know, skill set to, to keep the guy in the pocket because uh, those guys can really run and move. And they're just both really good, honestly, at extending plays with their feet. Uh, um, very, um, you know, maneuverable guys in the pocket and uh, have a real good idea where their receivers are at and, and do a good job of getting the ball to them. So, uh, again, I don't know that we'll change much X's and O's wise, depending on whichever one is in there. You just have to know what they like to do, one more so than the other. And um, that that's kind of how we got to go about it. All right, next question is from John Steppy. Hey, Jay, good to see you. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. So with Noah Shannon obviously not being able to contribute on the field, how have you seen him kind of contribute off the field this year in the defensive line room? Well, he's with just a couple of exceptions um, with some of the things that have been going on with him. He's been in, in the meeting room every day. He's been out on the practice field. He's he's basically uh, like, a, like a coach, if you will, from the standpoint that he's been in the system so long and knows all the, you know, the intricacies of, 
the nose and the tackle positions that, um, you know, he's able to to pull guys aside after play and say, look, you know, you should have done this or that, or you should have seen this or that. Um, he, he's been plugged in. He's been great. Uh, he's not a real super vocal guy if you get to know him. So um, it's not like, you know, um, you had this big voice that all of a sudden wasn't there. He, he's pretty subtle in his approach, but uh, there's just a tremendous amount of respect for him in this building as well as in the D line room, of course, but uh, he's done a great job of staying plugged in. And despite some of the, you know, some of the difficulties that he's encountered, he's really uh, been good for the guys and, and stuck right with it. So we appreciate love and having him in here every day. Uh, next question is from Scott Docterman. Good morning, Jay. I hope you're doing well. Thank you. You as well. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about kind of in-state recruiting and uh, the, the, the current freshman, true freshman class. Uh, last year was was you know a tough year I guess for you guys you lost some head to heads but then this year you doubled up signing day still you know a month away but but you've gotten I think seven out of the top eight recruits in the state was there a different kind of uh, did you guys double your efforts or do anything differently in recruiting or was it just a matter of kind of the recruits preference as to how you ended up with just a, an overall uh, huge uh, swath of players uh, from the in-state this year. Well, no, I don't. I don't think our approach has changed at all. Um, you know what drives them to decide to come here, whether it's personal preference for, you know, the school or a certain coach or a style of play. I, I don't know exactly. Each each guy's decision is probably based on something just a little bit different. But um, we've we've just kind of stuck to our method and and uh, done what we have done, and uh, fortunately, you know, if we can follow through and and get all these guys to come and sign with us in December when when that date rolls around, then then it will be a good class. But um, you know, it's going to fluctuate a little bit from year to year, probably just based on um, you know the numbers of guys available out there and and what it is they're looking for out of their experience in college football and in a, in a school. But um, Short answer to your question is no, I, I don't know that we've done anything differently. Uh, Coach, next question is from Cooper Worth. Good morning, Jay. <clears throat> I was just kind of shifting more towards the uh, secondary. I just wanted your thoughts on on Quinn Schulte. I know he's a guy who's been in the program for a while. And uh, just your thoughts on how you've seen him, see him grow and kind of uh, make an impact for the defense to to make the job easier for the first the front four. <clears throat> well, Quinn's a great guy, and he's another success story, uh, much like Joe Evans. Uh, came in here, worked his tail off, climbed his way up the ladder just through hard work and um, just just being a coachable guy who does what the program asks of him day in and day out. Uh, he's instrumental in doing um, – with what we have to do on the back end defensively, which also ties into the linebackers and eventually the front – um, the free safety and the Mike linebacker probably have uh, the most control, if you will, uh, of checks, uh, front checks, coverage checks, overall defensive adjustment checks, uh, things that we have to do to get ourselves lined up and ready to play. And um, I know the casual observer out there kind of views Iowa as a, as a vanilla kind of a defense, but we're pretty far from it in all honesty. And um, we've evolved a little bit, changed some things over the course of the time that I've been here. And it's been been fun to watch and be a part of. But I can just tell you this, that guys that, that play that his position, they have to have great football IQ. They have to have some leadership skills. Uh, he has both of those. And on top of that, you know, he's made some really clutch plays for us and has just been really consistent and steady back there. And uh, it, it takes somebody with a lot of a lot of moxie and a good football IQ to keep uh, everything going and, and staying in sync on the back end. So he's done really well for us. Our next question is from Tom Caker. Well, it's more of a kind of a personal question, but um, what's your Sundays like with, with uh, the last few years with two sons in the NFL and, and your uh, job responsibilities at the university of Iowa? <laughs> uh, it's a tough balancing act. Um, I, I'm not sure there's as much balance there as what I would like on the personal side because we're so tied up with what we've got to do on Sundays. Uh, Sundays are a, a transitional day uh, because in the morning, you know, we usually come in and get the film graded from the previous night um, and spend up until about noon doing that. And then in the afternoon, we start to transition. We watch the, player, the film with the players and then transition on to the next opponent 
busy looking at film to try to get ready for uh, our Sunday night meetings because we practice in the mornings on, well, every day, as you know, but uh, Monday morning rolls around on you pretty quick. But uh, we do have a little bit of flex time in the afternoon on Sunday. And if I can, I'll, if one of the boys' games is on the, you know, major network television, then I'll, I'll, I'll try to sneak some peeks at it. Um, it's best for me if they're playing Sunday night or Monday night, because then I might have a chance to watch a little bit more of it. And um, I do have a subscription to the NFL Game Pass, so if I miss it all together, I can just watch it whenever I want to uh, once the week is over with. Uh, my wife and I were able to get down to Kansas City to watch uh, the Chargers play uh, the Chiefs when the day after uh, the beginning of our bye week is what it was. So uh, thankful for that. And uh, sometimes towards the end of the year, once we get into postseason, just depending on what we've got going on in conjunction with when they're playing, uh, hopefully I have the opportunity to get away and see another couple games. So uh, we make it work however we can. All right, Coach, we'll go four more questions. Uh, first one's from Tyler Tashman. Okay. Hey, Jay, I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, was just curious about uh, Ethan Herkett as a guy that, you know, has been a contributor this season. How all have you just kind of seen him develop over his time at Iowa? Ethan's been been uh, fun to coach and a uh, great another example of uh, a guy who has just continued to climb through hard work and uh, really just seeing his fundamental base grow. Uh, we consider him a starter. Uh, he plays just about equal reps with uh, Joe Evans and Devontae Craig, Deontay Craig. And, um, you know, he's he's playing some really good football for us right now. Really physical guy, uh, very steady, very few mental errors, um, just a real positive force for us in there. And like I said, playing excellent football. And um, his best days are still out in front of him. He's just continuing to climb. So we're really happy with the progress he's made and how he's playing. Uh, Chad Lysico. Hey, Jay, one more for me. Um, you haven't had a ton of turnovers this year. It's kind of different from some previous teams. So how would you describe kind of the identity of this defense maybe versus some of those more ball hawking defenses? Or do you feel like the turnovers are bound to come at some point? We'll run out of time, so I, I hope they come pretty soon. Um, turnovers are it's, it's kind of funny um, and it's kind of cliche, but they seem to come in bunches. And um, why that is, I'm not absolutely sure. I do think that some of our interception numbers, uh, you know, over the course of time are, are due to the fact that we're top heavy in zone coverage. So we get a lot of eyes back on the quarterback, even though those numbers may not be quite as good um, this year as they've been in previous years. It's not because we've changed anything about how we practice or just how we are systematically. Um, it just a lot of times comes through, uh, guys being super aggressive and and uh, opportunistic, and hopefully uh, with several games yet to play, we'll really see that that number you know jump up, and uh, we'll be able to get some bunches because uh, it's it, it has. You're right. There's there's no arguing the point that it's been a little bit up and down. So uh, hopefully we can get that back in the right direction. Uh, Scott Doctorman. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about YA Black. Um, you know, his his numbers are not super imposing but yet playing you know a lot of two gap and playing where he is um you don't ask him to do that that's where jay higgins gets those numbers in a lot of cases but how how dominant is is there a way to kind of show how dominant he is without necessarily looking at the numbers because he seems to be playing as well as most defensive tackles in the league he's playing really good football for us and you're right chad i, I uh he just can't um there's no statistic to back up what he does. Um, so Scott, sorry. Um, uh, he, he, he's just disruptive. If you, if you have to put the film on to appreciate what he does, um, he knocks a line of scrimmage back, uh, which is really what we want to do. We're, we're obviously we have gap responsibilities and things of that nature, but we're more concerned about being able to push the line of scrimmage back. And he does a great job of that. He had a critical sack here two games back uh, just through knockback against the guard that was past pro on him and, and came off and made a nice play, had a good sack in the game. And it just is size, his physicality. And, and I've said this before about him and I'll say it again. I think he's probably got the highest football IQ in our entire room. He's a very, very smart football player. Um, 
understands protections, understands blocking schemes, understands pre-snap body language from the offense. Just a, a, a very sharp player. And uh, good to see him get through this season, you know, without getting nicked up. He's had so many injuries that he's dealt with in the past. And and I think we're seeing um, everything we expected we could see if we would get him healthy and, you know, string together a, a progression of game where he could just keep going without injury. So um, hopefully he continues along those lines and uh, he's, he's having a real good year. All right, Coach, last question will be from Elliot Clough. Good morning, Jay. Uh, I don't think we've 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 met. So uh, I'm Elliot. Obviously, <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice um, to meet you. Ontario Thompson is a guy that on special teams, it just seems like you have to make sure you're watching every time that they're the opposing team is punting. Um, also, just kind of an athletic freak from what we've seen. How have you seen him him grow? And and is he a, he a guy that you know Hawkeye fans should definitely be aware of, especially going into next season when you may lose some guys on the D-line. Well, I'm, I'm not going to put those expectations on him uh, for next year. Obviously, that's our hope, but uh, that'll come through hard work and just uh, begin to understand the intricacies of his position a little bit more. But he's a very athletic guy for his size, very explosive. As you mentioned, that as you referenced, that's that's showing up in special teams already with being in on two block punts. Um, for for a guy who is as, as tall and heavy as he is, he moves exceptionally well. Uh, so hopefully all those all those physical qualities and traits will translate over into you know playing the D line and and uh, it just seems like something that ought to be automatic, but it's not. You have to learn how to be able to use your power, your strength, your size, you know, through being fundamentally um, you know polished. And right now, like any other new player to our program. Uh, it takes time for guys to to learn how to do that. But um, he's making good progress. He's contributing in the ways right now that he can, you know, which is through special teams. And then we have – we did get him out there um, towards the tail end of the game uh, last week. Actually, he was involved uh, in, a, in a, the, the last stop of the game. Had a, uh, did a really nice job in a line stunt with one of our ends and, and um, you know, had a, had a good rush. So uh, it's good to get him out there get his feet wet. Hopefully we'll be able to do more and more of that as we go. And uh, again, he's, he's going to be just like these other new guys, like I said, where, you know, the more he plays and the more he practices, the more he, he just stays uh, locked into our system, you know, the better off he's going to be and the more you'll see his progress come along. All right, coach. Thank you. I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you guys. Appreciate it.